Hey, what's up guys? I've got a new treat from our friends at Banggood. It's the TS-80 smart soldering iron. The little brother to the TS-100 smart soldering iron. These are the little mini soldering irons that eh, basically run off the STM32 chip uh, smart soldering iron. That there's an oxymoron like military intelligence and jumbo shrimp since the extent of technology required in a soldering iron is for it to get hot but that being said I do appreciate the effort that goes into design and whatnot with all of these there seems to be whoa hello Okay, so here's what we're getting in the box. Disappointing, I wanted the nice little leather carrying case, but I didn't get one. So, we have the body, we have the tip, we have this little informational card, a USB Type-C cable, a grounding clip, a in this case a US wired oh, quick charge 3.0 output output 6 volt to 6 point oh, okay 6.5 9 volt to 12 volt okay and a small Allen key and yes the noise in the background is the air conditioner our temperature has gone back to uh, southern Florida standards So this is uh, relatively small, measuring in at about nine and a half centimeters. Or for those of you who have managed to land multiple men on the moon, about three and three quarter inches. And then we have the tip. By the way, if you're a flat earther or think the moon landing was fake, you probably shouldn't be watching technological and science channels. We have the chisel type tip, which is very nice. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I call this a Weller style tip. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. That's just what I call it. And it simply clicks in there with a nice pleasing little clickety click. Here is where our ground stat strap <laughs> attaches. You want to make sure you get your strap on the right place. It will of course be more important with some things than others. You know, if you're just tinning a wire or splicing a pair of wires, the ground strap is not going to be uh, life-threateningly important. But if you're working with digital circuitry, uh, in that case, it is going to develop somewhat more importance. Static can carry quite high charges, and you can fry a circuit without even thinking about it. Okay, so with all its accoutrement on, we've now increased the overall length to about six and an eighth inches. Or for those of you who use the only reasonable measuring and counting system, 15 and a half centimeters. We have uh, two switches here. The middle might look like a switch, but it's not. And we have the small OLED display, which is really, really small. We're talking uh, two and a quarter centimeters long by, you know, maybe four millimeters wide. That's, that's pretty tiny. And we've got our USB type C input here, nine volt, two amp QC3. The uh, card that's supplied with it feels very nice. No markings on it. Very nice, very flexible. Now, personally, I don't like the feel of these little soldering irons. I'm a fake Heiko guy. 
I like to feel this type of iron. This is never going to replace my bench iron, but for a reason we'll get to in a couple minutes, this might have a place as an EDC item. Let's look at the specs of this guy real quick. Our working temperature is between 100 and 400 C with 300 as our factory setting. I like 350. Sleeping temperature 100 to 400, 200 as our sleeping. 18 watts at 9 volts. So, we'll power it up, we'll tin the tip, and we'll see how it does on some heavier stuff. We know how it's going to solder resistors and capacitors, it's not going to be a problem. Now, this cable is kind of short. So that's um, something that you're going to want to be aware of. And for right now, I'm going to take off the grounding strap because it's just going to get in my way and annoy me. And it is not necessary for what we're going to do. All right, USB uh, C. We can plug it in either direction. So setting. Okay. Like I said, I want it to be about three fifty. It should time out. Yep. And we'll let it climb to temperature. It's pretty good. About 10 seconds. And um, let's zoom in here so you guys can see the display a little better. It's showing 8.57 volts. It looks like it's trying to show me AC. I'm not quite sure why. All right. Zoom out. And we'll get our tools that we need to tin the tip. Okay, so we have solder, we have our cleaning material, and we have some flux. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this is my method. This is not the only method. This is maybe not even the best method. It's simply my method. It works for me. Dip the iron in the flux. A little wipe. Apply a nice, healthy amount of solder to the tip. Clean it off. Flux it. Clean it off. Flux it. I'm going to do this about 10 times. My tip is now tinned. We zoom in here, getting something that I can focus on. You can see we are nice and shiny and tinned. So, like I said, we're not going to play around with soldering resistors and stuff like that. It's obviously going to do that. I want to see how it's going to behave with some heavier material. So I'm going to grab some wires that I use for the ground planes for my antenna outside. This is, I believe it's 14 gauge wire. And we'll start by seeing how well it's going to tin this. It shouldn't be a problem. But this will test the uh, thermal mass of the iron, how much heat that the iron is able to hold. Yeah, that went very, very nice. Now, just to compare and contrast, I'm going to grab my Knock off Heiko, the Zenny iron, which is set also for 350. 
just so nobody thinks we're cheating here. Yeah, let me clean that off a little bit so that we're at an equal playing field. Now this has a different shaped tip. This is the conical tip, so it is going to be at a slight disadvantage there. But I got to tell you, I think that the TS-80 did just as well, or perhaps even a little better. Okay, once again, my uh, testing methods are totally subjective here. One of the things I said earlier was that this could become an EDC item. Uh, the TS-100 was lauded as a nice portable iron because you could hook it up to a battery or your car battery or whatever and use it anywhere. But this guy, uh, being the USB... C is not going to run off of a 5 volt USB charger, but I've got a quick charge USB charger, and I'm guessing you're going to find out right alongside with me here look at that Now we have a totally portable, temperature controlled uh, soldering iron solution that I think would work out great for EDC. Now, let me see if I can find one of those little USB dongles so we can uh, watch the power. Well, I've got three of them. This one uh, doesn't do power. This one does. And this one does. So which one shall we pick? This just has a little gray screen. So I think we'll go with this one. This will only be the, uh, <laughs> the second time I've ever gotten it out of his pouch after our uh, review video on it. So let's get that out here. Don't worry, I'm going <laughs> to do my best to get it on the screen so we can all see what's happening with it. Okay. Let's see if we can get everything in place. Now, I haven't used this. So, I don't quite remember what buttons do what. I think I shut it off. One moment while I figure it out. It does not want to cooperate. That's a shame. Okay. Well, in that case, we can just go with this one because it has the uh, largest numbers that will allow us to read better. Okay. So we should be heating up here in a second. No. It says it's quick charge three. Heck is not working. Okay, this says heating. Hopefully, it doesn't shut off again. It's not. Well, I guess I'm wrong. I guess we can't do that, or at least not with that particular battery bank. All right, well. What that does mean 
though, is that I can plug this guy in up here. You're not going to be able to see it, but uh, we should be able to get it to work. Okay, so what I was going to do as a little test slash demonstration here, experiment, eh, call it whatever you want. We're going to just solder a couple wires together. And again, these are these are rather heavy duty wires. All right. Well, that's heating up. We're going to do it first with the Heiko, which is still set at 350. knocking everything everywhere and again this is not the you know what let me switch tips a doggone power bank doesn't want to play nice with us I was really hoping it would because that would make a uh, really nice little EDC item yikes that's a little warm Got to do it in stages. Don't want to burn my little fingers. Ah, yes, the wrong tool for the right job. That's how we do it. All right, let me heat this up and uh, clean it. All right, we are nice and clean with the Faco. Again, these wires are not really presented all that well. I just want to see what it's going to take to get them soldered. Come on, baby. There we go. So what do you think about 10, 15 seconds or something like that? And once again, the absent-minded professor has forgot to clip on his microphone. Sorry about that. So about 10, 15 seconds or so it took for that to happen with the FACO, which has plenty of thermal mass and, you know, gave us a pretty good job there. So I'm just going to cut that part of the joint out and then we tin both ends of the wire so we can do the same thing over here just like so if it will behave let's see where we're at here We'll get her all nice and heated, heated, heated up. We're climbing to 250 through 270. Now approaching 300. We're in the home stretch now. No, we've gone down. Now we're back at 300. Why are we back at 300? Okay, let's go up to. Work temp, 300, restore. Oh, I don't know what I've done. So we'll have to redo it, but that's okay. It's not like you're doing anything else. We're just sitting here chilling, right? We wanted it tree fitty. Tree fitty. There we go, tree fitty. And we're there. So just a little bit on there for some thermal transfer. And we said the other one took about 10, 15 seconds. 
and that came apart so my experiment is uh, it's not going to be good all right starting over again ba -ba -ba. don't know why you people even put up with me sometimes I'm like the completely unorganized professor right okay there we go I don't know maybe it's just me and maybe I'm having wishful thinking but I think that was faster what do you guys think we can't say anything about the quality of the joint or anything along those lines we are using comparable tips they're both chisel points I think I like this and you know I came in you can say you're as level-headed as you want but we all begin everything with our own internal biases so I came into this you know thinking it might be a nice uh, EDC thing but I'm, I'm not gonna like it well I do like it even though in my case it's probably not gonna work out as EDC so what do you think let me know down below i'm interested i think it's pretty nice um it's listed on banggood right now a mini t80 digital oled usb type c programmable soldering iron for uh 80 dollars us and this is a promotion sale until october the 15th which is next what monday or tuesday all right that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Send me savings bonds or gold coins in the mail. You know, whatever. Whatever makes you feel better. That's it. I'm out. Peace.